Hi everybody, my name is um, Chrissy. I'm from J Revolution and um, we have been busy in a series called Truth Be Told. And um, our last segment was all about pornography and Paul, who is here with me in the call, um, brought us an amazing teaching on, on pornography and how to overcome pornography. So today I'm actually going to interview Paul and I'm going to ask him a few questions about his battle and his walk with um, pornography and how he overcame it. And I really believe it's going to touch and change and transform the lives of many who are struggling in this area. So Paul, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you so much for your teaching that you brought us um, that we published last week. It really, really blessed so many of us. Um, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, where you live, where you're from, um, your family, just a little bit of information before we delve into the interview itself? Sure. Yeah. So uh, my name is Paul. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, and thanks, Chrissy, you know, for, um, you know, doing this interview. Uh, I thought it was uh, really important for me to help others, you know, who may be having similar problems. A little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in a place called Sabah in East Malaysia, uh, in a town called Kota Kinabalu. And um, uh, to cut the long story short, um, you know, I came here to study uh, back in 1985. So it's going back, you know, quite a long time. I came over here to do my year 11 and year 12. Um, that was uh, for matriculation, you know, to prepare for, uh, to enter into university. Uh, mm -hmm. Went to a college here, um, uh, a seven-day Adventist college. Now, I have to say the college actually was very, very good. So whatever that I'm sharing, um, I'm not trying to implicate and say that it was the, you know, there was a problem uh, yeah. in the college that caused the problem. You know, it was um, actually, you know, my, my own uh, issue. You know? um, the college was fantastic because we had, great teachers, you know, um, and we had a pastor who actually, actually, you know, overseeing us and he was fantastic. You know, he was really good, you know, really took care of us and, you know, always, uh, you know, encouraging us, you know, in the Lord. So, um, so I was very blessed, you know, to be there. Um, I got married um, in 1998 uh, with Juliana. And uh, after that, we immigrated to Australia in two, year 2000. And then uh, that was in Melbourne in year 2000. And then after that, in 2001, we shifted across to Perth. So we've been here, you know, uh, since 2001, but in 2014 to 2019, we actually, uh, you know, went across to Dubai and that's how we got to know Gateway Church and we got to know you, Chrissy. Yeah. Okay. So that's a little bit about ourselves. So we are now back in Perth. We are living in Perth now. Amazing. Yes. And um, I do know Paul and very blessed to know Paul and, and walk with him and his wife over the past few years. Um, so Paul, um, today we want to talk about your journey with pornography. And a lot of people are struggling in this area. And so we really wanted um, to find out a little bit more about how you got into it, um, the journey that you walked, how you overcame it. Um, so I think the first thing I want to ask you is how did you get into pornography? How did it start? Um, sure. And how, how long did it actually take you to get addicted to pornography? Um, if you can share a little bit about how that started. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so the background which I came from in Malaysia, you will not be able to find things like pornographic magazine. I mean, this is going back in the past, you know, when internet, you know, uh, wasn't there. Um, so I grew up, you know, in, in Malaysia, you know, which is quite conservative, uh, quite traditional kind of background. Uh, however, as I said, you know, at the age of 16, you know, my dad actually sent me out here to Australia to study. And Australia being, you know, a so-called sort of Western world, um, you have the vices. <laughs> And um, I remember, you know, when I went to college, you know, that year, now a lot of the boys who came, you know, to this Christian school, you know, were from non-Christian background. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so I remember one, one particular boy, you know, basically had stacks of, uh, you know, porn pornographic uh, magazines. And then he started sharing, you know, with the rest of the boys. And obviously, you know, being a boy, you're curious and, you know, you see everybody, you know, sort of looking at this stuff. And then, um, so you thought, oh, it must be okay, you know. And nobody has, I think the, the thing here is that nobody really prepared me or taught me. Um, unfortunately, I think my parents being, you know, from the traditional background, even though we kind of went to an Anglican church when I was growing up, it was kind of like a taboo subject. You know, nobody really wanted to talk about sex, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and pornography would be the last thing, you know, that, you know, um, our parents would want to discuss about. So um, nobody really kind of led us or guided us, you know, as we were growing up. So all of a sudden you're thrown into this situation 
you know, uh, pornographic you know, material easily available uh, and everyone's getting into it, you know, all your peers, you know, at, at, at college, you know, is getting into it. So, you know, to me, it seemed quite natural that if everybody's doing it, then it must be fine, you know. Uh, yeah. you know so I got into it. And uh, obviously, very enticing things that I've never seen before, you know. And um, so I got into it. But um, I think because I was still in the college, obviously, there was a lot of control. As I mentioned, you know, there was a pastor there overseeing. I was a boarder. I was boarding for about two years before I... Okay. Uh, you know, graduated from that, from high school, and then I went into university. Um, I think it probably took me something like maybe two years, you know, when I really got addicted to it. Uh, when I was in the school, obviously, a lot of control, so I didn't dare to go and buy pornographic magazine for myself. Uh, but when I went to university, you know, I was then outside, you know, living on my own, and then there was total freedom. I could do whatever I wanted. And then it was then very easy, you know, to just go out and buy, you know, uh, you know pornographic magazine. Yeah. And at that point in time, I also realized that you know, the internet was just coming up and, you know, you can find a lot of this kind of stuff as well, you know, on the internet. And I think I really got, got uh, hooked on it, I think, when I was actually at university. Um, yeah, so that, that's, you know, a bit of how, you know, I got, uh, I got into it, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. And um, so obviously you got addicted to it and you obviously started um, watching and viewing pornography regularly um, from your yes. So as, um, as the years went by, and you kind of delved into pornography. What do you think? What is the kind of impact that pornography had on your life? What? How do you think it impacted you? Um, I think a couple of areas. One is I would say it did affect my marriage. Um, you know, as a man, I have a duty to my wife, and so you know, when we are meant to, you know, uh, yeah. be having sex, uh, it would affect me. It would affect her as well. Um, so I think it to some extent, you know, affected our marriage life. Um, and apart from that, obviously, you know, as a Christian, I mean, I grew up in a Christian home, um, probably yeah. more from the side of a traditional Christianity. My relationship with, with, with God wasn't that strong at that point in time. I think it was later on in my life, you know, that I really understood, you know, what it meant, you know, to become a Christian yeah. uh, and to give my life to Jesus. Yeah. Um, but certainly, you know, I, I struggled, you know, through those years, you know, as a Christian, I, I knew that the word was, you know, very clear that it was actually wrong. Um, I think it's Romans seven, isn't it? That Paul says, you know, I keep doing the things that I shouldn't be doing, you know, but I, I do the things that I, I shouldn't be doing and I don't do the things that I should be doing. Yes. Uh, so I kind of felt that, um, that was a struggle for me. I, I kept wanting to follow God and do the right thing, but I wasn't able to. But at the same time, I believe that, you know, during those period, I was trying more with my flesh, you know, trying to do it you know, to, to say, oh, you know, look, you know, I'm going to stop this thing. Um, and I could for sometimes a period of time, but it would, you know, inevitably come back and then I would fall into the same sin again, you know, over and over. Um, and it became, um, I guess, like... Uh, cyclic thing you know yeah. a cyclic thing that I, I wasn't able to break you know um yeah. even though i was trying very hard you know uh, physically but um you know in my flesh but i, I wasn't able to do it Couldn't yeah and um, one one question so um the type of pornography that you were viewing did it stay mm. the same or did you go into heavier stuff i've heard that some people kind of start very with something very light but in the end up going into heavier pornography or was that not the case with you I, I did. I think, um, you know, you, you sort of watch some stuff and then you see the thing I think with pornography is um, you might be watching something and then other things will come up, will pop up, you know. I mean, that, that's the, the, the pornographic world and the enemy will try and throw all kinds of different things at you, you know. So you might be looking at things that you know, becomes worse and worse. Yeah. Um, so it did get heavier, uh, I have to admit. But I think at some stage, I realized that you know, some of these things were really heavy and I, I backed out of it, okay. but, you know, still got stuck, you know, with the, um, the, you know, I guess the basic pornography, you know, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was an enticement to actually go into that, into that area. Um, so but I was to go deeper, right? Because some, yeah, yeah. well, some people actually give into that. They kind of go into very deep and kind of hard pornography, which opens up other things in their lives and other types of temptations as well. 
Correct. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, you told us about how you how you started watching pornography, the the impact that it had on your life, and now you mm. mentioned that you tried to overcome it and kind of step away from it on your own in your own strength. Um, and you said that didn't work very well. You kind of went through cycles where you would try and walk away, but then you would kind of come back to it. Um, yeah. So what did you ultimately do? Because we know that you ultimately went on a journey and you were actually able to overcome pornography. And that's what we yes. really want to share with people who are struggling in this area. Yeah. Um, how did you overcome it? Because you said you tried by yourself to, to step away yeah. from it, but you couldn't. Um, so yeah. what did you have to go? What kind of process did you have to go through in order to overcome it once and for all? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, just one more thing as I remembered, uh, in terms of impact also, apart from, you know, like my marriage, you know, we did affect it. The other thing that it affected was, I guess, my, uh, my walk in terms of my Christian walk and wanting to do ministry for God. So I was always wanting to do something for God. But, you know, this thing, because it's like a skeleton, you know, in the cupboard, right? So yeah. when you want to do something and you move, want to move forward for God, you know, the, the enemy keeps coming to you and keep reminding you, hey, you know, why are you trying to do this thing for God? You know, because, you know, you've got some hidden thing that, you know, um, you're doing. You are kind of like a hypocrite. You know, you're trying to portray, portray yourself, you know, as a Christian out there. You're trying to do ministry work and all this kind of thing. But you're a hypocrite because, you know, you're watching pornography. So that kind of, kind of caused me to shrink back. Uh, because it's literally the enemy has got a ransom over you, you know, uh, and he's holding you, you know, and he's saying, look, you know, yeah, don't try to do any kind of ministry work because, um, you know, uh, you're watching porn. And um, that, that was difficult for me because I, I was always keen to do something for God. By, for many, many years, I wasn't able to really step up, you know, for God uh, because of that. You know, it really kept me back. Um, yeah. So I Very interesting, I, Paul. If I can just ask you one question in that regard. So do you feel that being stuck um, and the enemy like constantly making you feel guilty about it and questioning you and bringing it up every time he wants to do something with God, do yeah. you feel it affected your ability to walk in what God had called you to do? Um, and yeah. step into what God had called you to do. So it kind of was something yeah. that was holding you back from stepping into your plan and purpose. Yes, for sure. I think it had, you know, uh, impacted me, you know, uh, for many years. So now I'm, you know, sort of 50 plus and, you know, I'm set free. So praise God. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I mean, I'm talking, I guess, to the younger people, you know, if you're just getting into pornography or, you know, or you're still stuck, but you're young, I would say get out of it, you know, as soon as possible. Because God has got a, an amazing plan, you know, for your life. And basically the enemy just wants to meddle with your life and to destroy your life and to destroy your career, destroy your ministry. Uh, so if you come to the realization of that early, the peace, and I'm sharing this with you because, you know, I've gone through that, that journey and, you know, I won't want you to be there, you know, to go through all the years, almost sometimes I feel it's like wasted years, you know, that uh, uh, were unproductive for God, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm coming in and, you know, really into the ministry now, you know, for God, you know, late in my life. Uh, and if someone is younger, you know, I would say, you know, just, you know, uh, be very careful come out of it you know yeah you can you will come out of it you know? yeah um so for me i you know obviously for many years i knew god was nudging me you know i think the holy spirit was nudging me and telling me look you've got to get out of this and i said you know like you know i was having difficulty then i thought look you know i, I need help you know i need help in this area you know i think this is an area that sometimes i think especially for men it is difficult to talk you know to talk to someone yes um, yes. you feel you're right? you gonna be strong, you know, you gotta do it on your own, you know. Yeah. Um, and then talking to another person, you feel very uncomfortable, you know. But in yeah. the end, I, I said, look, you know, I, I really need to reach out to somebody. So I, I reached out to actually uh, this was still in Australia before I left for Dubai, and I spoke to I think two friends, you know, both of them were pastors at that time. And I spoke to them, I said, Look, I got this issue, you know, can you pray for me? So they started to pray, you know, with me and uh, to pray for me that, you know, I'd be released. And um, I believe I did get some, um, you know, release, you know, from the prayer, uh, from this bondage, but yeah. it wasn't fully broken. Okay. So, and then later on in 2014, you know, um, I was basically offered a job. I wasn't chasing after it, but somehow or rather an ex-colleague of mine got me into it. Uh, to cut the long story short, 
myself and Juliana ended up going to Dubai. Now, at that point in time, you know, I was thinking I'm going to Dubai because of the job, you know, because of money, because of the job. Yeah. But now looking back, I realized, you know, it was God bringing me there, I guess, to clean me up. And I think he also saw that I wanted to get out. And, um, you know, he sent me there, you know, he sent us there, you know, so that, you know, we can actually, you know, find, you know, a real breakthrough, you know, for myself, uh, you know, for my life. Yeah. And so while we were in uh, Dubai, obviously we attended Gateway Church, got to know some of the leaders there. So, you know, and I can see that, you know, like Pete and others, you know, they were very genuine in their faith. They were very strong in their faith. I can, I look at them, I say, wow, this is amazing. I, I, how I wish, you know, I could, you know, become like them, you know, like, yeah. you know, you can see them and say, wow, you know, this is fantastic, you know, to be really yeah. strong in your faith, you know, to walk and to do, you know, the ministry of, you know, uh, of God, you know. So I, um, I started then to uh, kind of ask God, look, help me. We did go out to a, um, um, a family. So it, wasn't, it was a man's camp. I remember now. It was a man's camp. So we went out to the desert. And then I can't remember who preached exactly. But basically the preacher said, look, I need you guys, each of you, to just um speak directly to god you know go off on your own so each one of us were asked to walk out into the desert you know on our own That's amazing. and say just do business just do business with god you know so i i went i walked on my own you know to uh you know secluded area i just said god you know i know this is my problem i bring it to you and lord you know i want to get out of this you know i need your help and uh so after that not long after a couple of things happened so the first thing was uh two friends of us who were very very close to us at that time um we we you know actually started the life group in business bay and this friend of ours you know he gave me a stack of cds you know uh from joseph prince ministry so i said just listen to this mm. so i said okay fine you know i uh, didn't think too much about it but at that time i began to listen to the cds whenever i went to work i was driving i would listen coming back i would listen and then i think just hearing the word you know being spoken over my life that began to do something in my heart you know to bring about change wow. and then there was there was another another uh meeting that we had you know uh for the men i remember i think uh richard pheasant was actually speaking uh you know at that at that uh, at that meeting and again you know he was dealing with some of these issues you know talking to the mighty men wow. and um then as i was uh you know thinking about it he then said look there are here are some issues that men can be having you know if you have issues and all this and he gave us a piece of paper he said look you know why don't you write it down and one of the leaders will pray with you you know to if there are bondages you want to be broken you know why don't you write it down and that's when i went to uh, richard i i basically told him this is my problem i said can you pray with me and he did he prayed with me and then uh, actually richard became my uh, my mentor you know or spiritual father you know for a season you know while i was there in dubai so he continued to you know, uh, guide me and, uh, you know, oftentimes he would ask me, Paul, how are you going? You know, are you going all right? You know, um, have you, you know, had any issues, you know, in this particular area? So he was able to also guide me. You know? So I think God put these, you know, people, you know, in place to help me. Um, at the same time, also, I, I learned from the teaching from Joseph Prince that, you know, to, to break that cycle, you know, that you go round and round, uh, you really need the righteousness of Jesus. You know, when you continue to declare, you know, that you're a son of God, that you're righteous before God, you know, sooner or later that will that has to sink into the heart and break yeah. that cycle. You yeah. know, yeah. And uh and yeah, after some time, you know, I amazingly, you know, this thing, I think the desire, you know, to watch pornographic stuff and all this, it just kind of dissipated, you know, it, it went went off. I think it's working uh -huh. with God, you know. God wants you to be free, but at the same time, God also wants you to fight, you know, because we are in a spiritual battle. Um, so God, God can, has done so much, you know, on the cross. So everything is possible. You know, if you want to break free, you know, he can set you free, but mm -hmm. then there's also our part, you know, we have to do our part, you know, to be free and, to, mm -hmm. you know, not only to, to, to be, you know, uh, for the bondages to be broken, but at the same time that we have to continue to walk in freedom. And that is a fight that we have to continue to fight you know, each and every day as well, because the enemy is not going to stop, you know, he's going to keep coming in and trying you know, hook you back into it you know, uh, or, or do something to cause you to fall again, right? So therefore, we have to have the wisdom to be able to, to walk in, continue to walk in freedom. And God also showed me, you know, how I can actually do that. And praise God, you know, I've, you know, since, since that time, you know, I've been set free and 
you know, I, I don't go back because I know it is a poison to my soul and uh, and it's deception, you know, from the enemy. And um, yeah, so praise wow. God, you know, I've been able to be, yeah. you know, to be saved. That's such an amazing testimony, Paul, like how mm. God actually brought you to another city and helped you um, get yes. in touch with the right people and yes. he allowed you to go through the right process in order yes. for you to, to get your deliverance um, once and for all. Yes. And I think just to, just to summarize what you said, what you're saying is that um, it's a partnership right, between you and God. There's yes. God will do his part, but you also have to do your part. Um, and that is going through the deliverance and being accountable to somebody and um, reinforcing um, and reinforcing that with the word of God. Um, and so I feel like what you're saying is it has to be that partnership with God because you try to do yeah. it on your own, but you weren't able to do it on your own. Correct. Amazing. So um, just like, a, like just taking it from a different perspective now, because you said earlier that, um, you know, you got into contact with pornography and nobody had taught you about it. Nobody yeah. had, um, you, you know, your, your school parents, whatever it is, didn't really, um, didn't really prepare you for this. And yeah. I think today we have a generation of people who are even more at risk of being um, exposed to pornography we are in an era of technology um, and devices. Um, our kids are on iPads, um, connected to laptops all the time, iPads, devices, phones, whatever it is. And so the ability for them to come into contact with us is, is a lot easier than it would have been in those years. And so what, it, what advice would you give now if you have a parent listening um, who's got kids uh, what advice would you give to them in terms of what should they do in terms of preparing their children for this and protecting mm. them from yeah. um, protecting them from pornography, but also preparing them on how to respond if they come into contact with pornography? Sure. Yeah. Um, first thing is, um, say, for example, for our son, John, what we do is we, uh, we have a software to okay. basically filter stuff to make sure, you know, uh, as much as possible that, you know, pornographic material hopefully doesn't pop up, you know, on, on his, uh, yeah. you know, on his uh, uh, laptop. Um, but, you know, I can say that, you know, obviously John is obviously curious. Sometimes he will go to school and come back. I mean, we've heard of him, you know, come back and, you know, he hears certain words and he's kind of curious. What, what does that mean? What does it and mean? for us as adults, we know exactly what it means. And so yeah. um, we got to start teaching him and say, look, you know, this is actually a bad word and it actually means this. Um, and, you know, we, you know, are going to advise you, you know, not to use it because it yeah. is basically, a, you know, a, 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 a abusive word, you know, or, or um, uh, you know, uh, expletive uh, that, yeah. you know, you should not be using um, or swear word, whatever it is. You know? So we, we begin to teach him while he's young we use filters as well to try and uh, control as much as possible but you're absolutely correct because now like all of his school work is done on the laptop you know or on a computer so it is a generation which is quite different you know from the days you know when i was studying yeah. um, everything literally is on a computer so it's almost a very fine line between you know them doing their work and then them playing and then them you know uh okay. looking at things you know, in, you know on, on the internet um, I know that there is one other family friend, what they do is, um, they actually put their laptops, you know, in the general family lounge. So whenever the child is actually, you know, whether they're doing work or they're looking into the internet, yeah. it's actually in an open area. And the mother is actually sort of, you know, working, you know, at the, um, kitchen bench and she can actually see what the, what the son is actually doing, what he's looking at. So I think, you know, keeping that in the open could be another thing that you, you can do. Yeah. Um, uh, and then also, I guess, you know, for some parents, you may want to, from time to time, just look at, you know, what your, your children have been looking at on the internet. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I know Juliana, um, she will just quickly flick through and see what John has been looking at, you know, uh, yeah. on the internet. I think it's to protect them. You know, if they're looking at things that which they should not be looking at, then we, we got to, you know, basically talk to them and say, you know, we saw that, you know, you were looking at, you know, this particular uh, website, you know, uh, why and, you know, and then if, if, if they are curious or they want to learn or something like that, then we got to teach them. 
I think sex education probably should come from parents. Um, yeah. I you know, I mean, so. sex is a good thing, you know, isn't it? Sex is a good yeah. thing because, I mean, God, God made it, you know. But I think the enemy takes what is good and turns it around and make it, you know, uh, into something that's bad. Uh, so therefore, we need to teach our children. I think it should come from us. I think the church should teach the children, or in fact, the parents, you know, or Christians should teach the children, you know, these uh, these teachings uh, about about sex, about you know, um, the truth in God's word, rather than wait until the world go and teach them, because the world will teach them something that's wrong. Exactly. Um, we need to so, be the educators, right? We need to educate our kids. Yeah, the family right. units, the church, we, even though it's difficult topics, we need to be the ones that are educating our kids in order to protect them. Um, so I think this is very, very important. Um, yeah. just, a, just a comment from my side. I don't know if you would agree with this, but I actually remember speaking to a woman once who yeah. her and her partner were stuck in pornography. And um, one of the things she actually said, which just actually came to my mind now, was that she feels like it was making, it felt like it was making um, making um, an object out of a person, if that makes sense. So instead of seeing the person as a person, like sex is supposed to be something beautiful where you share your love with somebody else or express your love and intimacy. But yes. pornography was making the person an object, like a thing. Not something yes. valuable, but an object that is there to fulfill my desire or satisfaction. Um, yes. Did you find that from your side? I think, um, yes, I think, you know, it, it, it would kind of bring you into that kind of a thinking. Um, because I guess, you know, uh, a woman or man, whatever it is, you know, who is yeah. actually Some doing the act. Side. Yeah, literally become an object, you know, and and I guess the enemy is yeah. using people as objects. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, pornography you know, is very enticing, right? Um, it it basically, yeah. you know, it's the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh, you know, which are, you know, being drawn into this, causing you in a person to be drawn into this thing. Exactly. And um, yeah, eyes. so it ends up, you're, you're quite right, you know, it ends up that, you know, the person or the person's, you know, involved in the sexual act that you're watching, literally they become objects. And actually they are the objects of the enemy. They're yeah. using them, you know, to, uh, to uh, cause these people to commit sin. And yeah. at the same time, people watching it, you know, to be, uh, you know, committing sin as well. So, uh, so enemy is very, very deceptive, you know, using these things, you know, to, to, to catch us. Um, and, and therefore we have to be careful, I guess, not to be, uh, you know, trapped, you know, by, by this uh, kind of sexual sin. Exactly. I think it's, I think because um, it just came to my mind, you know, the Bible says that we fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Um, but this kind of, and, and sex is also just something to express love and celebrate love and celebrate the other person. And there's so many things that yes. are involved in a sexual relationship. But yeah. I think it just objectifies a person and it kind of takes away the worth and you just become an object, a sexual object. Uh, which is very, very much in opposition to to what God wants wants for us, um, in yes. my opinion. Because it says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Every person is made in the image of God, and you are not That's an right. object. You are you Correct. are you are unique. You are special. You were created with a plan and a purpose, and you are not an object. Um, and I think That's it's right. very important for us to remember. Okay, um, one last question, and I just want to summarize a lot of what you said. Um, what advice would you give? to somebody now either who is entering into pornography or maybe just started looking at it or is is considering um trying to overcome it any like last minute advice that you want to give um to any of those people who may be considering both both options yeah um i think uh i guess i mentioned it earlier um it is very addictive you know um I think oftentimes when we look at these things, uh, especially someone who's getting into it, uh, oftentimes we think, you know, ah, it should be okay. If I just watch a little bit, it's mm -hmm. going to be all right. I'm yeah. strong enough. And this is basing, you know, uh, our strength, you know, uh, on our own strength, our own physical strength, our fleshly strength. And once you do that, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, it becomes a problem because uh, if you rely on your flesh, you know, you're thinking carnally, 
basically he says, you know, you know, thinking carnally is going to bring death. And, you know, we, we, we end up falling because we think we are able to do it, but we are not because the enemy is so deceptive. And um, this kind of sexual sin pornography is very, very addictive. Yeah. You know, you, it's almost like cocaine. You know, you take like cocaine or that kind of thing. You know, you, you get yeah. sucked into it and then you are not able to break away from it. Um, so, you know, someone who's thinking about getting into it or just getting into it, I would say, do your level best, you know, to get out. Um, it's not going to be, you know, uh, any, do you any good yeah. in the long run. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to bring, I guess, suffering. And I think so some people even, you know, uh, probably mental issue because you, you yeah. know, you deal with, you try and break out, you know, for many years and you seem trapped, you know, in your own mind, you know, you're trapped, you know, so yeah. um, it's, it's not an easy thing. I think, you know, so my, my advice would be, it is poison, you know, to your soul and to your mind um, to try and get out of this, you know, as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're struggling to, to get out, uh, find somebody whom you can trust, you know, it could be a pastor or a friend yeah. or a strong Christian whom you can trust, talk to them and ask them to pray with you, you know, for deliverance. And if they can't help you, then go and see someone who can, who can help you, you know, with deliverance. Uh, to come yeah. out of it uh, and to break it, you know, completely. And then also, you know, ask them to continue to stand with you all a period of time, you know, as yeah. you learn how to stand against this thing, you know, you will need their help as well, you know, so, you know, they can continue to encourage you, you know, to walk, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, and, and to be separated, to be holy, to live a, you know, holy and, and pure life. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. Cool. That's amazing advice. Um, and I think just to summarize, I think it's important for people to remember that um, number one, um, they can't do it by themselves. They have yeah. to. They have to do it in partnership with God. Um, yeah. Number two, I think the deliverance portion for me is very important. I think mm. that sexual sin causes um, causes strongholds in your spirit and your soul. And yes. I think going for deliverance prayer is extremely important in overcoming pornography. Um, mm. And then I also want to reiterate another thing that you said: accountability and doing it with somebody. The Bible yeah. says that we should confess our sins to one another and we will be healed. And I think there's a power because it's sin. part of sin's power is in its secrecy and hiddenness and darkness. When you bring it out into the light with somebody, it, it almost exposes that, that sin, but also weakens it. Um, and that accountability to somebody else also helps you overstand or kind of know that you're answering to somebody if you do if you do fall back into it. So you know the person's going to check up on you, which makes you think. And I yep. think finally, you said you were listening to those Joseph Prince um, CDs. And I think yep. what, what that was very powerful in that as much as it's a, a spiritual um, stronghold that we have to overcome, we also have to renew our mind because... Um, we started building up wrong strongholds in our mind and yes. listening to the word, reading the word, listening to the word helps us change those thought habits and processes in our minds. And we start yes. replacing a lot of the stuff that we, the junk that we put in our mind, we start replacing it with the truth of the word of God, which I think okay. helps immense the process of, of really walking away from it once and for all. Um, yeah. And so I found the process that you shared that you went through extremely powerful and I think mm -hmm. if somebody really wants to give um, give up pornography and they want to walk away from it for good, um, they 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 really need to understand those steps that you went through um, instead mm -hmm. of trying to do it by themselves. Because I think a lot of people try and do it by themselves. Um, yes. So yeah, Paul, I just want to say a huge thank you for, for being willing to talk about such a difficult topic um, because sure. um, a lot of people don't want to talk about these things, especially in Christian circles and churches. Um, because it's very taboo it's a very difficult topic people don't want to admit that they're struggling with it but when you shared your your message last week I was quite shocked by some of the stats that you shared about Christian men and pastors that are struggling with pornography yes and yeah. um, I just want to say like I just want to really salute you and thank you for being willing to address a difficult topic that most my, most places and churches are are struggling to talk about and struggling to address and um, I pray that God will just richly bless you um, for the fact that you've been willing to come forward and share your journey and share your experience um, to help men and women um, over overcome this and also talk about 
ways that we can help protect our families and our children um, from this um, in the future. So thank you so, so much. Um, yes. We will be sharing a little bit, uh, some contact details afterwards on how they can get in touch with us or maybe even your church if people need help in this area. Yeah. Um, and so we're hoping that people are going to reach out to us for, for help, maybe in terms of deliverance or accountability or for community or whatever it is. We're hoping that people are going to reach out to us to, um, to, sure. to, to seek support and help that they may need. Sure. Yes. But thank you so much, Paul, for, for sharing. You're most welcome. And, um, yeah, we, Paul runs a church in Perth. So if you guys are ever in Perth, please do. Um, what is the name of your church, Paul? Kairos. It's called Kairos, Kairos. Church. Yeah. We started so, September, September 2020. Yeah. Amazing. So. <laughs> so if anybody's in Perth, please go visit Karos Church. You'll be really, yeah. really blessed by being part of them. Um, so so thank you, Paul, and thank you um for sharing once again. And um we just pray that God will richly bless you. Yeah, thank you so much, Prissy. And uh, all glory to God, you know. Um, I mean, you know, it would be impossible for me to, you know, be here today to share this with you if it hasn't been for God, you know, helping me through the process and helping me break free. You know, so I just want to give, you know, all thanks and glory to him uh, because he's actually set me free. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> for setting yes. me free. And I, I can say that, you know, uh, any one of you, you know, out there, if you're struggling and you want to be set free, you will be set free. You know, you can be guaranteed because the word of God says, you know, he will set you free. Uh, you just need to find the right person to help you, um, you know, and and continue to work in it. I mean, sometimes, I mean, for me also, it took me a couple of shots at it. Like I said, you know, I was in Australia and I tried, you know, already with two passes and that wasn't fully successful. I was getting there. Things were being broken off, but it still took, you know, a bit more. Uh, and but when I got to Dubai, you know, I was able to break it, you know, break free completely. Uh, resources that you know I was talking about uh, with Joseph Prince Ministry. It doesn't have to be Joseph Prince Ministry. Uh, in Australia here, I think we have the Valiant Man. Uh, in the US, as I understand, I think there's the Conquer series, and there are many others. You know uh, that deals with this kind of area, in in particular, you know, uh, dealing with pornography. Um, so latch on those to, to those uh, you know uh, material. Um, get help, you know, from someone who can, you know, assist you in, a, in this particular area, who can pray with you and who can stand with you. And uh, at the end of the day, it's actually, you know, the God's word, you know, the truth, you know, from God's word will set you free, you know, and, uh, you know, be sure that, you know, God will help you, you know, through this process to get out of it. So anyway, I pray, you know, uh, blessings over you. Uh, if you're struggling, I pray that, you know, you will get out you know, uh, quickly, you know, out of, uh, out of pornography. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much for listening to me. And uh, Chrissy, thank you so much you know, for uh, the interview today. Thank you so much, Paul. And we also just want to say, if you need deliverance or help or prayer, you can uh, message us on healing at jrevolution.net or you can go to our website and get in touch with us. Um, and like I said before, also, we're going to continue in the series, Truth Be Told, covering very, very difficult topics. Um, and like I said, if you're ever in Perth, please visit Paul and his church. And uh, Paul, we thank you for, for being yes. part of the revolution and for partnering with us and just supporting us as we do. So thank you so much. Um, and God bless.